What we lost in the fire, we found in the ashes. Hello everyone, welcome to my review of The Magnificent Seven, directed by Antoine Fuqua, with a screenplay by Nick Pizzolatto and Richard Wenk. The film takes place in the post-Civil War Old West, specifically the 1870s in Louisiana, where seven gunslingers come together to defend the small town of Rose Creek against a ruthless, overbearing, greedy antagonist. The film stars Denzel Washington, Chris Pratt, Ethan Hawke, Vincent D'Onofrio, Peter Sarsgaard, Haley Bennett, Manuel Garcia, Rufo, and Martin Sensmeyer. Before I delve into the review, I would like to specify how I review and analyze sequels, prequels, remakes, sidequels, adaptations, and even films within a filmmaker's filmography. The way I view them is on their own. I don't use comparisons to other films or previous films in a franchise. The reason why is because I believe that every film deserves a chance to stand on its own first and foremost. While comparing one film to another is a very interesting and thought-provoking conversation, I personally don't believe that it should be involved when specifically analyzing one film. That's just me. Others can have different philosophies of how they view these types of films. But that being said, let me delve into the positives. As I said in my intro, there is a wide range of actors in the film, a wide range of diversity of different personalities, and I feel that that is a very much a positive of the film because you get all of these differences kind of meshing together and in most cases they could mesh together very messily and they could not fit but I felt genuinely that the characters although their introductions were rather rushed and their coming together was rather rushed I still feel that by the third act of the film things started to congeal together when it came to their relationship which is very important in a film like The Magnificent Seven where you have seven protagonists coming together for a common cause, you have to believe that these three guys actually have some type of companionship. Although I like all of those characters together, I'll say the film is not a character piece. The film doesn't really take the time to really develop any of them. You get, I think, enough from each character to kind of get a gist of who they are. Some characters obviously get more screen time than others. Specifically, of course, Denzel Washington was very much the lead of the film, Chris Pratt, who is a huge star now in Hollywood. Interestingly though, Ethan Hawke's character, I felt, was a character who did have some depth, at least a little bit that they touched upon in the film. I won't say specifically or give any type of plot detail, I'll just say sometimes your past tends to haunt your present. Ethan Hawke and Denzel Washington, as people may remember, start together in Antoine Fuqua's earlier film, Training Day. So their on-screen presence together really was strong. Chris Pratt is kind of typically Chris Pratt in this film. He is very much comic relief, and good comic relief too. And there is kind of a heart to him as well. One of the most interesting characters that they really don't delve into enough, in my opinion, is Young Hun Lee's character, Billy Rocks, who is a straight badass in the film, right from his introduction all the way up until the end of the film. I really hope to see him in more American films. Vincent D'Onofrio is also in the film, and I almost didn't recognize him. He portrays kind of this mountain man who quotes the Bible a lot, and he's just great on screen. D'Onofrio is a great actor, specifically if you've seen his recent turn as the Kingpin on the Netflix series Daredevil, you'll know how great of an actor he is. He's been around for a very long time. Peter Sarsgaard plays the antagonist of the film, Bartholomew Bogue, who is this very sinister kind of egomaniac. Unfortunately for me, he's very much a one-note villain who is only there to facilitate the plot of the film. He's not very complex. Haley Bennett portrays Emma Cullen, who is the initial person who hires Denzel Washington to come to the town and protect them against Peter Sarsgaard's character. I felt that she was 
kind of overacting, specifically early on. But as the film went on, her character started to adhere more and more to the plot. She started to become this strong female character, bent on vengeance. Denzel Washington, as I said earlier, is very much the lead of the film. He's worked with Anton Fuqua in various other films. They have a great working relationship together. He gets the most screen time, the most character depth. He's very much a gunslinging hero. And Denzel is fantastic in the film. I mean, if there is one true acting highlight of the film, it's Denzel. He is still a great on-screen presence. He has this charisma about him that really generates well with the viewing audience. The strongest aspects of the film for me were specifically the filmmaking. Antoine Fuqua, in my opinion, is a superb filmmaker. He has this ability to include very beautiful stylization into his films and it's his own unique stylization and he does that into this film in a very kind of genuine way to provide some spark to the film. The cinematography at times I felt to be gorgeous. There were certain cinematographical techniques that were very very reminiscent of classic western films that I personally love. Specifically, pay attention to when Denzel Washington's character is introduced to us in the film. Also, Antoine Fuqua has this ability to shoot action in a very gorgeous way. There is a lot of editing in his style, but it's not rushed editing, it's not shaky cam. He allows the action scenes to move at a quick pace, but a quick pace that keeps you engaged and you're not confused about what's happening where. There's a very powerful way that he shoots his action scenes. I mean, there was a specific mesh of quick editing and sound design where you really felt this impact. When you're sitting in the theater, you felt the impact of the bullets whizzing around, the bullets making contact with people. It was really, really a very immersive experience. There is a great balance to the action, specifically in this film, because there are so many characters you have to keep up with and see what they're doing. And it's through this immersive experience that I think the film really shows its value, this sense of adventure and action, and I feel that this film really provides that. Unfortunately, that means that the film really doesn't provide much of anything new that we haven't seen before. Anything new in terms of plot, anything new in terms of character, which is one of the main hindrances of the film. But just because we've seen something before and we're seeing it again, doesn't necessarily make that a bad thing. Sometimes films are lazy in terms of screenplay and filmmaking to where they're just reusing old techniques and old plot points and old things like that and then sometimes they bring an extra freshness to them, an extra spark to them and I think with Antoine Fuqua that's what you provide. If this were a more lesser known director, a more I would dare say generic director, you wouldn't get any type of flair to the film. I feel that fans of old-time westerns I think will be generally entertained. I mean, this is not a film with great depth when it came to the great westerns, specifically those of Sergio Leone, John Ford, Howard Hawks, people like that. But I feel like if you viewed classic westerns with that sense of entertainment, adventure, and escapism, you will really enjoy this film. One of the main issues I have with the film is that it's supposed to be a film about kind of these outlaws, these bounty hunters, gamblers, thieves, whatever, coming together to take on an even badder guy. But the problem is the characters that come together aren't really bad guys. They're actually really, really good guys who just happen to be drunks and gamblers and bounty hunters and stuff like that. It really doesn't have them being in any type of gray area. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it is a Hollywood production, so you need to have almost these defined roles. It has to be very stark in terms of who are the bad guys and who are the good guys. I would like to have seen more parody when it came to that. I mean, it doesn't have to be necessarily brutally dark, but I mean, all the good guys are genuinely portrayed as 
purely good guys when they're not supposed to be. And it kind of ruins the point of the film or ruins the extra kind of specialness and uniqueness of the situation. It doesn't ruin it enough to ruin the whole film for me, but it's kind of a thing that bothers me. Just an interesting kind of, I guess, film historical anecdote here. This film is, as many know, a remake, but it actually is a remake of a remake. Here you have the remake, which is John Sturge's Magnificent Seven, which this film is based on. And this film here is a remake of this film here, which, as many cinephiles may know, is Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. This film is one of the most influential films ever made. Akira Kurosawa is one of the most influential filmmakers ever. And this film, I'll save this because this will be a much longer review and a much later date. This film here is just a master of work, a masterpiece of cinematic proportions that I can't stress enough is a vital, vital, important part of film history. Also, interestingly, Akira Kurosawa was heavily influenced by the American Western, specifically the American Western's directed by John Ford. He was influenced so much so that his samurai films are kind of the westerns of Japanese cinema. So it's very interesting that one of his samurai films would be remade into a western, a genre that influenced him to make a samurai film. So it's very interesting how cyclical film tends to be. If you enjoy Antoine Fuqua's version of The Magnificent Seven, then I implore you to go back and watch the Western starring Steve McQueen, Eli Wallach, Charles Bronson, James Coburn, Yul Brenner. It is really a fantastic film, but keep in mind when watching older films, you have to put things into context. Don't view them with a modern lens that you would view today's movies because it's a much different film landscape than it is today. With all this being said, I think I would give Antoine Fuqua's The Magnificent Seven 3.5 out of 5 stars. It's a film that is very entertaining. It'll bring you a taste of what it was like to watch an old western back when it was at the height of its popularity. And I also think it's a very well-made film. This has been my review of The Magnificent Seven. If you like this video, please stick around because there will be a lot more videos like this to come.